Peter Gabriel, I think, um, in amongst all that, just because he's fearless. Um, but more than that, I think, um, I think that probably the two things um, any artist need, needs to be great um, uh, is, is imagination and, and curiosity. And I think he has, he has those things and relies on them completely. And even though he works with kind of, you know, virtuoso musicians and um, he knows exactly what he wants from them. He has a vision in his head. Uh, he knows what not to get distracted by. Um, uh, and actually we, we recorded at Real World um, ages and ages ago. Um, and we were going around the various studios that he uses when he's recording an album. And it was just a sea of post-it notes with the name of, you know, like Tony Levin. Could, could you make the bass part more green? You know, could you, you know, and just endless curiosity. What, what would happen if I tried it like that? What would happen if we did that instead of that? Um, and just through that, you know, not being fettered by, you know, having been in, you know, the biggest prog band ever, um, not being scared to go into pop music, not being scared to go into world music. Um, yeah, he, he's the guy. Uh, I, don't know if, I, I don't know if there's any real difference, except that there's a kind of... Uh, um, especially in this country, there, there's a kind of um, uh, almost shame about, you know, doing extended compositions or, or even playing your instrument well, and I, which isn't me saying that, you know, uh, virtuosity is important, because I don't think it is. It's only important in as much as if the song needs it, if the song demands it, it's important then. Um, but you've got bands coming up now, uh, there's a band called Everything Everything, there's a band called Field Music who incorporate uh, lots of those prog elements, the time signatures, stops and starts, um, you know, uh, clever stuff, but still make it pop music. Um, and I guess the difference is um, people are trying to compress the ideas because attention spans are shorter. Um, I think in the 70s, you know, we were probably all stoned enough that, you know, extended songs were, were fine, whereas now, you know, there's stuff just flashing us flashing at us all the time and uh, I think necessarily people think right okay I'll, you know brevity I've got to kind of you know keep rein this in um, so yeah I think that that's probably the only real difference but it's the same imagination at play it's the same kind of bravery it's the same playfulness which is I think a thing that gets missed off you know uh, the whole prog thing when it's mentioned but yeah yeah I think this is gonna be an odd one because they're not strictly speaking a prog band but there was um there's a punk band called No Means No, uh, and it's a bass and drums duo. And, and I guess they would class what they do as jazz core, um, but it's, it's time signatures and stops and starts. But it's, it's, um, uh, they're incredible to watch. They're brothers, and they are amazing at their instruments. They don't often even have a guitar. It's just kind of amazing kind of riffs, and it's quite complicated. But it's all sustained by this kind of, this kind of fury going over the top, so it's like, quite controlled but um, they really let rip with the vocals and just the passion just watching them play and realizing it's okay to be good at your instrument it's okay that's not something to be ashamed of as long as you direct it in an interesting way as long as it's not about look how good I am and it's about you know this is how I'm feeling this is what I'm trying to express um, and yeah I stood there for an hour and a half and was just amazed they were well over 50 at the time just playing punk rock in this tiny little club um, you know without a guitarist and it was just brave and kind of Great, so I think that's probably the one. That would be, uh, there's a band called Ultrasound, who uh, were about maybe 10 years ago, um, and they just reformed actually. Um, but they did a song called Best Wishes, which I'm not sure is on an album, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a beautiful song. It's a real journey. Um, it goes from, you know, there's choral parts, there's a kind of, um, heavy part, there's just a really beautiful kind of lilting floaty part, there's, you know, uh, it's seven or eight minutes long and it's just, just stunning. Um, and I remember hearing it on the radio and telling everyone in the office a week after I'd started work to be quiet so I could hear what it was at the end. Um, yeah, so yeah, the ultrasound, best wishes. Um, that Roxy Music album title, um, For Your Pleasure. <laughs> 